in May 2005, a paper by Professor Huang was published in Science, making him a celebrity in the global science community. It was one of the most brilliant feats in the history of science. After testing whether the stem cells are matched with the body cells of patients, we have confirmed that all their immune systems matched. The world applauded the work in that the cells are tailor-made for patients with incurable diseases. Last year, Huang created the world's first cloned stem cells. However, they were hard to apply to patients and not practical because creating a single stem cell line required 242 eggs. With all the difficulties, 11 patient-specific embryonic stem cells were created. It was a milestone in the efforts to heal patients with incurable diseases and one of the next generation engines for the Korean economy. I hope singer Kang could stand up again from his wheelchair to show his amazing dance moves soon in this show. In October 2005, the World Stem Cell Hub opened, serving as the headquarters of the global stem cell research. Professor Huang, of course, was at the center. About 20,000 patients with incurable conditions around the world registered at the hub. Professor Huang has emerged as a living legend in the Korean society. Then in June 2005, NBC producers note received a tip related to Professor Huang. The tip by a researcher shocked the very ground of the legendary Huang. I'm sending you this letter because I just can't let go of the truth about Huang's science paper. I hope you will not fail my faith that the truth should come out in the end. In an interview with our producer, the tipper said, as a scientist with a conscience, he decided to reveal the truth. The issue is the 2005 science paper, which cannot be the truth, at least for conscientious scientists. He was deeply involved in the 2004 science paper as one of the key members of Professor Huang's research team and knew Huang's work very well. Another whistleblower in the research team confessed it wasn't easy for her to decide to disclose. I thought when the news is publicized, all the negative evidence against Dr. Huang would not persuade the public because Huang is perfect in the public's eyes and almighty in the scientific community. In one way or another, I, I could get hurt. Are you afraid? Yes. <laughs> However, the whistleblowers only raised the suspicion that the 2005 paper might have included false data without hard evidence. When our staff was first notified, it was hard to believe them. They were not directly involved in the 2005 work, However, they played pivotal roles in the Professor Huang's team by 2004 and were not in a position to gain any advantages by revealing the scandal. In addition, since they had not been harmed by Professor Huang, it was not out of personal feelings against him. As many as 25 authors participated in the recent paper, our production team decided first to meet with them and to discuss the stem cell research. 
What contribution did you make to the 2005 science paper? Me? I cannot tell you that. Ask Professor Huang. As far as the science papers, I have nothing to tell you. What contribution did you make to the 2005 paper? I worked with Huang on the 2004 paper, on which only young scientists were credited as co-authors. This time, however, they listed my name on it as well. Through our coverage activities, we found out most co-authors didn't directly contribute to the stem cell research. The reporting team asked Mr. Ro Sung-il, another lead author with Professor Huang, whether he has seen the stem cells himself. Concerning the 11 stem cell lines on the 2005 science paper, have you actually ever seen them yourself? Uh, I believe whatever tip you have, there are about 11 cell lines, as far as I know. Have you seen them? No, I haven't. Even the lead author didn't see the stem cells? We were at a loss. <laughs> Professor Shatton is known to have played a decisive role for Huang's paper to be published. Then wouldn't he have seen the cells? Uh, when you saw the stem cell lines for yourself uh, through the microscope, did you see all the 11 lines or just part of them? I don't really remember. Y you must understand that when I come to Korea, I leave my brain somewhere over the Pacific Ocean because it is 12 hours difference. I, I can't tell you if I saw 8 out of the 11 or all 11 or even all 12 because I recall seeing the original one from the first paper. Closer? Yes. Professor Shatton also testified that he definitely saw only the first stem cell line on the 2004 paper. Science, a world-renowned magazine with 125 years of history, is famous for its strict verification process for its published works. The peer reviewers read the evidence very carefully and obviously agreed that Dr. Wong had done it right. Very interesting paper. We asked him how they verified Wong's paper. Is it by uh, just paper or you just you know, get the real cell? I mean, do, our, do our peer reviewers receive cultures of the cells? No, of course not. They receive all other kinds of evidence that, that, that's obtained with them, but it would, it would be no use for them to see the cells themselves. Okay, so you, the peer reviewer just get a document, like um, data? Right? Yes. Even science didn't see the stem cells. All they did was examine the data sent by the researchers. To apply for a patent of Professor Huang's stem cells, according to the Budapest Treaty, stem cells must be deposited at an institution that is internationally approved. The Stem Cell Line Bank in Korea is an authorized depository. This is where Professor Huang locked in hundreds of millions of dollars of future profits. If he applied for a patent, wouldn't he have deposited his stem cells here? <laughs> Professor Huang's 2004 stem cells were also deposited here. The production team confirmed the frozen stem cells of the 2004 paper. Usually before paper submission, stem cell lines are deposited in the bank. Then with the certificate we provide, it is possible to apply for a patent at the patent office. Usually, deposit is done within six months after a paper's publication. The 2004 stem cells were deposited in January, before the paper was released. However, even after six months of the 2005 paper, no stem cell line has been deposited.
More than half of the 25 co-authors have turned out to have little or no contribution to the paper. Besides, unlike the usual verification process that lasts over six months, science completed the job for Huang's paper in only one and a half months. The production team couldn't find anyone who has seen the stem cells. The team believing that at least someone must have seen them in the process of paper preparation began to look for the one. The gene of a patient-tailored stem cell must match with that of a patient because it's from a patient's body cell. That's what enables a transplant. The paper has proved that the genes of a patient and a stem cell are identical. Then who would have proved this? Professor Huang, on several occasions, has said an authorized institution has tested the genes. You can see here that through DNA testing, it is indisputable that we have made clone stem cells. The National Institute of Scientific Investigation has told us there's almost no possibilities that they are not cloned stem cell lines. We asked the National Institute of Scientific Investigation if they have tested the genes. We didn't conduct any official test. Maybe it was from an unofficial route. One of our employees might have a connection with Huang's team. Even though it was important data for an international magazine, Professor Huang didn't go through the official verification process. Besides that, it is questionable that the test was done at a local branch, not in Seoul. Then did the researcher of DNA testing analyze the gene of a patient's body cell and that of a stem cell? Did you actually see the stem cells? No, Professor Huang's research team sent us only the DNA samples. To prove a patient-tailored stem cell, the DNA of a patient must be compared with that of a stem cell. Then if not from stem cells, wouldn't it be possible that the test was done on two DNA samples from a patient's body cells? Only with the gene analysis, a stem cell gene on the paper cannot be confirmed to be the gene from a real stem cell. It's so easy to lie that human clone cells were created because this gene test can be falsified. Consequently, the researcher who tested the gene didn't see any stem cells and couldn't confirm whether the DNA samples were from a stem cell and a body cell or from other sources. The best advantage of patient-tailored stem cells is that they don't have immune rejection, which is one of the greatest risks when the cells are injected in a patient. We have confirmed, as you can see, they have identical immune systems. T-cell, an immune cell, operates by human lycocyte antigen, HLA. When it comes to cell or organ transplant, if the HLA gene is not matched, immune rejection occurs. The HLA gene must be identical to enable a transplant. However, in the case of patient-tailored stem cells, HLA genes of the patients are identical to those of the stem cells, hence no such rejection. 
That's why the work was hailed as an advancement for incurable disease treatments. Then, did the researcher who tested the HLA genes receive both body cells and stem cells of patients? Stem cells are in colonies, so it's easy to tell them from other cells. But as we received the samples in split form, it was hard to tell. Even the researcher who tested the immune system didn't receive the stem cells in a colony. Like the one who tested genes, it's turned out that the researcher who did an immune system test has not seen any stem cells. It raises a question that the stem cell verification test was not done with actual stem cells. Then, is there a test that must be done with only stem cells? Yes, there is. Stem cells refer to those that can be differentiated into every other cell in our body, such as neurons or organ cells. Therefore, verification is necessary that a stem cell can differentiate into many other cell lines. This is called teratoma verification, which must use stem cells. We began to look for those who did teratoma verification. Injecting stem cells in a skid mouse creates benign tumors because the cells are differentiated in the body. When a stem cell in a tumor is observed to have differentiated into many organisms, such as neuron or muscle cells, then it is truly an embryonic stem cell. The test begins with injecting a stem cell into the testicles of a skid mouse, an immune-free mouse. Then, in 12 weeks, the cell keeps differentiating and a benign tumor develops. Cut the tumor, apply paraffin, and the picture of the slide shows into which cell tissues the stem cell has differentiated. In the body of a skid mouse, a stem cell is differentiated into every tissue. This is the teratoma formation, an evidence of a true stem cell. According to the paper, seven stem cell lines from two to eight have been differentiated. Cell lines two, three, and four are attached with their teratoma pictures. Probably only Professor Kang and I know the whole process. I checked later, and teratoma was formed in all cells with absolute verification. That's my answer. You're saying all 11 stem cells form teratoma? That's right. We visited a medical professor who is named as the one responsible for teratoma formation. Did you verify teratoma formation in 2005 paper? No, it was last year's paper. In 2004, when the first human embryonic stem cell was created? Yes. Then, for the 2005 paper, who confirmed it? Well, I don't know. Our production team visited Ms. Medi Hospital Lab that is equipped with teratoma formation tools to ask whether they experimented on teratoma. How many experiments did you do? 
um, about three, uh, as far as I know, do you mean three different lines, not a single line, were put into the three mice? Correct. The researcher, who allegedly experimented on teratoma formation, said she did only three, not eleven. But moments later, she changed her statement. You did three teratoma experiments for the 2005 paper, not the 2004 one? Actually, it's not three, it was two. I only did two. A note on the experiments showed that in the Ms. Medi Hospital, stem cells were injected into the mice twice, in November 2004 and January of 2005. And finally, in April 2005, the pathological lab did teratoma formation on lines two and three. Then where were the remaining nine cell lines teratoma formed? We asked Professor Kong. Dr. Yun Hyun Su of Ms. Medi Hospital did it at Seoul University. Some are at Seoul University and others are at Ms. Medi Hospital. Where at the university? Our, in our lab at the veterinary school. Do you have such a lab at school? We have our animal laboratory. Can I see it? The animal lab is not open to the public. If it's open, the system in the lab will be destroyed, so we seldom open it. We went to the animal lab to find whether skid mice were raised there for teratoma formation experiments. He said he had never even heard about skid mice. Have Professor Huang Kang or Lee byung Chun ever experimented with the skid mice here? Uh, am I allowed to say this? <laughs> they never brought the mice to this lab. So, you mean Professor Huang has never experimented with the skid mice? Never, not with the mice. Professor Kong's testimony that the experiment was done at Seoul National University was not true. We asked Professor Huang for an interview on this issue. Professor Huang rejected a camera interview. He agreed to an interview on the condition of sound recording only. Uh, uh, I think two were done at Miss Medi Hospital and some with the support of the Korea Research Institute of Bioscience and Biotechnology. And the rest was done here at Seoul National University and confirmed by Professor Kim Dae Young. What kind of job did Professor Kim do? I did the experiment for the 2004 paper, but I wasn't involved in the 2005 paper. Someone else did. So you didn't do anything for the 2005 paper? Yeah. Right. Our team confirmed this when we met Dr. Che of the Korean Research Institute of Bioscience and Biotechnology. Did you experiment on teratoma for the 2005 paper? No, I didn't. Are you sure? Yes, I don't know who did it. Anyway, I didn't do it for the 2005 paper. Both of them said they didn't do the experiments. Then, Huang pointed at someone else again. Do Do Dr. Kang, where did we raise the skid mice? At the temporary building of the school, where our old lab used to be. Why would they have experimented on the immune-free mice in this temporary building instead of the sterilized animal lab with advanced facilities? Besides, the building has been occupied by the dog cloning research team. After the interview with us, 
Professor Huang asked science to correct his paper related to the issue. He wanted to reduce the number of stem cell lines that succeeded in differentiation from 7 to 3. Still, the so-called successful 3 are not convincing. Other than teratoma 2 and 3 from Ms. Medi Hospital, in the paper there is another teratoma picture of the cell line 4. Who made that picture? Professor Huang told us that seven stem cell lines have been confirmed for teratoma formation. However, after the interview, he revised the number to three after consulting with science, a difference as many as four. In the meantime, our staff has confirmed only two stem cell lines, number two and three. Then, who and how was the last one teratoma made? Ms. Media Hospital verified teratoma formation and the researcher who took the picture of them for the paper was in the U.S. Our producer's note team went to Pittsburgh to meet him. The researcher who took pictures two and three was away at Pittsburgh University. Our production team first introduced ourselves and told him that our purpose for coming to the U.S. was Professor Huang's paper. Kim was very flustered with the unexpected questions. We're here to discuss with you first. Frankly, we wish only to hold Professor Huang responsible. You will not get hurt. What do you mean by hurt? We wish none of the others but Huang to be uncovered. <laughs> uh, I don't understand. <laughs> because you're such a promising young scientist, we are really sorry to tell you this, but honestly, we already know that the 2005 paper was false. Why don't you go back and talk to Professor Huang himself? I have n nothing to say. Why don't we go somewhere else? Kim suggested we move somewhere else and was afraid that his identity would be revealed. He wanted a clear answer from the team that his identity would not be revealed. Did researcher Quan tip you? Tell me. I think I need to know. We cannot reveal the uh, informant's identity. Anyway, he must be someone I know in my research team. You can assume, but we can't tell you. Does that mean my identity is also protected? Absolutely. Can you promise? Yes. Our production team asked how three pictures were published when there were only two stem cells that went through teratoma experimentations. What did you get for your teratoma test? I received the cells. Then I cultured them, injected line 2 and 3 into mice. With the results, I made pictures. Since I made many copies of them, Huang must have used them all. He meant that Huang inflated two teratomas to three. However, more surprising news was about the pictures of 11 stem cells on the paper. How many stem cell lines did you get? Three. I did teratoma experiments on two and three. I took staining pictures of 11 stem cells with three lines. Did you just say you made 11 stem cell pictures with only three lines? Yes. Who ordered you to make 11 pictures out of three cell lines? Professor Huang did. Did he give you a direct order? Yes. 
It was a shocking confession by Kim that he falsified 11 stem cell pictures with three cell lines. It was Professor Huang who ordered him to do so. Now what? Aren't you much more relieved now that you told us everything? You must have had some regrets. Yes, I was just a powerless subordinate. All you did was follow an order? Right. I did what I was ordered to do. But still, have you ever tried to tell him this is a huge fabrication? <laughs> I couldn't afford to do that. I couldn't say anything. Kim testified that he made 11 stem cell pictures with cell lines 2 and 3 and said the teratoma picture 4 looks likely to have been made out of 2 and 3. That means that Kim has seen at least two stem cell lines. Then, are the cell lines 2 and 3 that Kim saw cloned stem cells made out of patient somatic cells? The journalist, a producer's note, went on in search of the answer. There are two kinds of embryonic stem cells. One is the in vitro fertilization, IVF stem cell, a combination of sperm and an egg. The other is the nuclear transfer, embryonic stem cell, which is a combination of an egg whose nucleus is transferred with that of a cloned body cell. These two kinds of stem cells, however, are hard to tell apart, even by an expert. More than 40 IVF stem cell lines exist in Korea. I assume that Professor Huang may have persuaded a researcher at the Miss Medi Hospital to change its 11 IVF stem cells into nuclear transfer cells. Then how can we confirm whether the cell lines of Professor Huang are nuclear transfer or IVF stem cells? According to experts, genes of a stem cell can be identified with teratoma. That's because cell tissues are fixed in slides. Our team found where the teratoma slides are. Ms. Medi Hospital experimented on teratoma formation with cell lines 2 and 3. However, the teratoma slides in the hospital were retrieved by Huang's research team right after our coverage. Could you provide the teratoma formation slides so that we could do a DNA fingerprinting test? Yes, I can. Yes. Then we will come back to get them. Yes. Sure, as you wish. However, unlike his promise, Professor Huang never provided us with the teratoma slides. Professor Huang promised he would provide us with teratoma 2 and 3, which can be used for genetic analysis. However, he never kept his words, saying he didn't remember where he put them. Under the circumstances, our producers could not but be suspicious of whether the stem cell lines 2 and 3 are really patient-tailored clone stem cells. What is the truth surrounding the 11 stem cell lines? Professor Huang accepted our request for an interview, saying he was willing to dispel all the suspicions we suggested. Mm -hmm. Can you remember when the 11 patients' specific stem cell lines were established from blastocyst? Producer Han, I'll make sure I do a thorough job in the future. Now that I know I'll be in trouble otherwise. Although his work was a world-class feat, Professor Huang, as a lead researcher, didn't even know when the cells were established. Recognizing our suspicion, he promised to re-examine his cells by providing us with samples of cloned stem cells. 
이 고학 인젝션 하고 뭐 무슨 소리 좀 해. 그 일단 어차피 저 재료 채취할 때 그때는 I will let you record everything with the camera when you come back for the sample. If you still have doubts after the test, then you may broadcast this or ask us further questions. In five days, our producers went back to the veterinarian school to receive the stem cells as Professor Huang promised. But Professor Huang wasn't even there, and Professor Li and Kong kept us from recording with our camera. This camera is not allowed. No, not with the camera. Not only preventing our recording, they also refuse to provide the stem cells. Our production team was suddenly at a loss as we failed in witnessing the stem cells. Once again, our team asked other co-authors at the medical school for their cooperation. By that time, nothing was heard of from Professor Huang. Once again, we related to Huang that if he didn't keep his promise, we would verify the stem cell lines 2 and 3 that are kept in MSK Cancer Center in America for a differentiation study. If you have difficulties in cooperating with us, we are willing to ask Dr. Studer, the director of MSK Cancer Center in New York, for a verification. Only then did Professor Huang's research team agree to DNA verification. What number is this stem cell line? That's two. And this one? It's three. We received stem cells and patients' body cells from Huang and patients' hair samples from the medical school. Finally, our team began the verification on them, along with a lawyer and scientists who were selected by Professor Huang. Our production team got five pairs of stem cells and patients' body cells. We commissioned ID Gene, an authorized institution by the government, and Seoul National University Forensic Medical School for the gene analysis. To prevent any prejudice, we didn't unveil the contents of the samples and ask them to use the same method as on the paper. The results? Out of five pairs of stem cells and body cells, only lines two and four produced the expected results. Did the genes of cell lines two and four match those of the patient? We asked forensic experts to read the findings. What did Dr. Lawrence Kplinski, a professor of biology and amniology at John Jay College, find about the results? And in the case of E2, there was a non-match for the individual N2. So that stem cell line came from some other source than the individual N2. Uh, and E4 and N4 do not match. So uh, what little we do have in the way of information on stem cell line E4 uh, would indicate that it, it does not derive from the individual N4. According to the forensics experts, the stem cell line 2 provided by Huang doesn't match that of his paper. In the case of the cell line 4, it was indiscernible by one and confirmed a non-match by the others. With these findings, we met with Professor Huang with his lawyer. Professor Huang disapproved the results and made issue of the institution's credibility. I doubt whether the analysis was accurate. An expert in DNA fingerprinting would have extracted DNA from the cells I provided. I don't understand the DNA results. Like Professor Huang said, why did so many cells produce no results? 
It depends on the condition of samples. For instance, if the amount of each sample is very small or combined with other chemical compounds to solidify protein or destroy DNA, no results will come out. I cannot trust this analysis agency. Let's have a re-examination. I agree to the completion of it within a week. However, Professor Huang nullified the agreement without an excuse and held a press conference to the public. We are aware that there are absurd rumors and we have had difficult days amid sufferings and pain. After our reconfirmation and review, it has turned out there is nothing wrong with the stem cell lines. Wang's research team ignored producers' notes reports, citing the authority of Science magazine. It distraught me as a scientist that a non-expert makes an issue of the paper that has been acknowledged and authorized by science on several occasions. After that, Huang was hospitalized due to psychological reasons, and producer's note was blamed by the public for the suspension of his work. Politicians also expressed harsh criticisms against producer's note. It is absurd that journalists attempt to re-examine Professor Huang's work. It's no different from a simple lawmaker like myself that tries to reconfirm his work. The world-renowned scientist Huang made the paper, and it was confirmed and published by the world-famous magazine Science. Since the magazine has accepted the paper, who would dare to reconfirm the work? Most of the Korean press also criticized the coverage by producers' note. They said it was nonsense for a non-expert program to refute the work, which was proven by the world-renowned magazine Science. Media coverage that Professor Huang's stem cell research will drive the Korean economy has elevated him to a national hero. Many Koreans had an illusion that protecting him is the only patriotic act. Such an attitude led to an egg donation campaign making a whopping thousand women volunteer to donate their eggs for Huang's research. In the meantime, a spokesman of Professor Huang called for a suspension of the program, Producers Note, giving warnings to the production team. Once you broadcast a program, you will find a huge aftermath. Besides, this issue is quite multi-layered, involving both international and national problems. The repercussion might be greater than expected. In spite of such pressures from the public, producers note expressed the will to broadcast the program as scheduled. Professor Huang's team, knowing that our producers had a strong will to air the program, finally decided to use the power of the media in their favor. They provided a huge amount of money to the researcher who testified about the paper's fabrication through our program. Wang's team asked him to have another interview and say that he was coerced 
to testify so. And some media reports even exaggerated this part, ignoring the fact the paper was falsified. All they did was criticize the reporting process of producer's note. They even reported that our team allegedly had commented that we're here to kill Professor Huang during our interview. This was far from the truth. As a result, the scandal over paper fabrication suddenly changed into an issue of ethical reporting. Producer's Note received countless emails and threatening calls that blamed the production team. Eventually, Professor Huang's scheme against our program worked as intended and producer's note was put under unprecedented suspension for two weeks. Although Professor Huang was able to blind the public, however, he couldn't stop young scientists from speaking out. Out investigation gave them a platform for them to voice their concern and suspicion. Mr. Kim's testimony we acquired in the U.S. that he had fabricated pictures on the paper has been proven by many scientists. On the analysis of stem cell pictures on the paper, seven pairs have turned out to be the same pictures of the same stem cell. As suspicion over paper falsification came to surface, foreign press also began to show interest in the scandal. Even Science Magazine, which had expressed confidence in Professor Huang, asked for reconfirmation. Eventually, on December 12, 2005, Seoul National University decided to conduct its own investigation on the results of Professor Huang's stem cell research. We decided to set up an investigative committee to identify controversies over Huang's research and find out the truth. With producers' notes, sudden reports on Professor Huang's scandal, we know and feel sorry that many Koreans who have held deep confidence in him must have been shocked. However, we also expect that by addressing transparency in our society as a whole, including the scientific community, our reports would eventually be in Korea's national interests. Nevertheless, we are very sorry for the trauma that patients with incurable diseases and their families might suffer from. This is all we have for today. Thank you. The scandal over Professor Huang shocked Koreans and the whole world. What questions does this scandal pose for Korean society and the world science community? After this program was broadcast, both of Huang's papers in Science Magazine were retracted and he is currently under prosecutor's investigation.